It's the internet, you're busy, let's do this. It's the Games Beat Decides podcast, the podcast where we decide everything about games so you don't have to do it for yourself. Uh, I'm your host, Jeffrey Grubb. With me is Michael Minotti. Hey, hey. And we also have Big Bob Gardner. Hey, you can't get rid of me that easily. Yeah, I'm glad, we're glad you're back, Bob. We're going to talk about the news today. We're going to talk about some games. Uh, we're also going to talk about how it's possible in the year 2017 of our Lord that Nintendo's online app is so bad. Uh, first, though, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, you can get more from me and Mike at GamesBeat.com. You have something to share. Uh, share share with us at Games Plus Podcast at MentureBeat.com. Um, we're also on Twitter at GamesBeat or at GB Decides. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch, you can subscribe to the audio version of this here podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and more. Finally, if you like the show, rate us on any of those platforms. Please, 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 please. So, uh, how's your guys' week been? What have you guys been up to? Uh, you know, not much. I don't know. That's why I asked. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, not much. Not much exciting, really. Yeah, I, uh, the big the big excitement for me over the weekend was I, I fixed a lawnmower and then I broke it again and now I'm still fixing a lawnmower. I, like that's just in the back of my head at all nice, times. Nice, I, dude. I, I know. Yeah, I felt very <laughs> I felt very man, manly. Testosterone was coursing through my veins uh, after I c- cleaned out the carburetor, um, put it back together, and it worked for a little bit. And then I fixed something else because I'm like, oh, I can just keep going, keep fixing it, making I could make it the best lawnmower it could be, um, and and then apparently not because yeah, it's not it's not working. Um, but other than that, lots of Splatoon two for me. Um, that's sure, the game. Yeah. That's the game I've been playing the most. Uh, we we talked about this a, a bit over the last couple of episodes, but it's still a good game. It's live now. It finally came out yeah. last Friday, uh, and it seems like it's getting well received by fans and people who are new to it alike. Uh, Mike, you still playing it? Yeah, I had a chance to play it with my brothers, which you know it's it's a pain because we're basically using Discord. Uh, and we yeah. have to like join people's games in progress and just like see if we're going to be on the same teams or not. Most of it's like very rare that all three of us are on the same team barely ever happens. Right. But it's like, you know, it still is a lot of fun, even though you're dealing with all that kind of, you know, BS. It's just such a great, uh, amusing little game. Yeah. It's still uh, a, a really good. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to add that to the list of games that I need to play. It. need to play. I mean, you have a switch, right, Bob? Or are you, have you not picked one up yet? I actually haven't. Um, uh, I have controversial opinions on the Nintendo Switch. Well, I mean, just tell us those real quick, and then we'll move past you and ignore you. Ignore your bad, <laughs> ignore your bad takes. I think it's a glorified Android tablet with a well, really yeah. nice control system, and I yeah, was but, but... really burnt by the Wii U, and kind of don't want to give Nintendo my money anymore. Okay, that last part I can, I can understand, but I mean it is yeah it's a glorified Android tablet, but it's it works plays Nintendo it, games. Yeah, it plays Nintendo games. It's a huge difference. I mean, uh, we've gotten it sound, yeah. It sounds like it almost sounds like an insult at it, but I mean that that makes all the difference. Yeah, yeah, it does. I, I mean, it I, is available I, I, on other platforms, right? What Splatoon two? Yeah. No, no, that's a Nintendo uh, original. Oh. Nintendo oh. made that made that bad boy. That was a Wii U exclusive, and now it's a Switch exclusive. So, I mean, you you could have conflicting opinions. You could think it's a bad system and still get one for Splatoon too. Uh, so the solution here is to get somebody else who likes Nintendo more than me to buy the system that I know. Ah. There you go. Well thought. Yeah, mm-hmm, you're an, e- an evil genius. Uh, <laughs> I, I will I will say it's um I'm I'm not so much caring about the online app in practice when I'm actually in there. But if uh, I haven't tried to group up with friends since it came out either, um, I'm just kind of going to treat it as a game. I play online by myself, like here and there, a couple matches here and there. Um, and then if people do try, do try to like want to group up, yeah, we're just going to have to do what you were saying, Mike, and just kind of backdoor it back ass it because it's, yeah. uh, it's so broken. It's still just private matches too, unless you get into the league play, which you have to work a lot to unlock. So right, so that's a mess. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know, but it's let's... It's a fun uh, little mess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, still a solid game. It's just Nintendo's online infrastructure is so busted. Uh, but, Bob, you got some games here. Why don't you tell me about... Uh, let's catch up on Factorio. Let's get a Factorio update. What's going on, <laughs> what's going on with your so, mega bases? So, so, so con- continuing the trend from last time, uh, Factorio is love, Factorio is life. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm still playing the same map. Uh, my my base now sprawls over what would probably be the equivalent of the United States of America, uh, with uh, a, a, a train system moving items from place to place. Yeah, basically, I'm making a massive mega base. 
I have uh, nearly half a terawatt of solar power being generated. Jeez. I'm launching rockets into space about once a minute. Like, it's all got a bit crazy. Um, so I was talking about this with a friend of mine because I'm like, I think I'm kind of getting too close to done with this. Um, and I tend to like games like that, right? So I've been playing mm-hmm. a lot of Factorio. I've been playing some Big Pharma, if you've played Big Pharma. I haven't touched it. Uh, Never heard of Big Pharma. It, Big Pharma, uh, as yeah, in give us a rundown P-H-A- of it. Yeah, Big Pharma, as in P H A R M A, like the drug company, <laughs> All right. uh, uh, is is a puzzle game kind of where you build uh, like production lines to build drugs to sell, and you try and compete against other companies. And it's got this kind of cartoony, uh, almost early Sims, early theme hospital kind of look graphic style to it. It's really good. It's really fun. Is the gameplay kind of like um, Game Dev Story or those uh, those mobile? Uh, I can't remember the door kind name. kind of. It's it's like so you have you have basically you have factories, big factory floors, and you put down machines and you put down conveyor belts to tie them together, um, and then you like to adjust the the values of uh, different raw materials to produce drugs. I promise it's a lot more fun than it sounds. Like apparently every game I play. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I was talking with a friend of mine called Malachi, who is a game designer for pen and paper games. Um, and we came to the conclusion that there is a genre of gaming which we don't discuss as if it is its own genre, but is, which is logistics games. Yeah, I was going to say, it like sounds like you're, Farm, micro- uh, yeah, it sounds like you're micromanaging the floor itself. That very much is logistics, totally. Yeah, and, and so I've come to the conclusion that that's a genre of game. And like lots of other games touch touch on it mm-hmm. but very few are just like i am a logistics game so i think i might try and make one just to see whether yeah, I'm go right. for it. that's cool yeah i mean there's definitely something there i mean you see um aspects of this in sports management sims and things like that that, that yeah. there are some logistics aspects to those things uh even um even like just the the general manager sim that's in like a game like mlb the show or something uh like that kind of stuff just where you have spreadsheets but i i do like it when uh what you're describing with big farm where you actually are putting the machines on the floor and the machines have their own uh variables you can mess with uh, i like it when it's that level of interactivity still and not just spreadsheets i think i mentioned it the first time i talked about factorial where these games it's like someone's built an rts right and like you, you look at league of legends and you look at like the new dawn of wars and they've gone, okay, what does an RTS with no macro or micro look like, right? And I feel like these games go the other way. They go, what does an RTS look like with no micro or macro? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, still playing Factorio. Uh, now on to the point of apparently thinking about it philosophically. <laughs> I mean, got to get there eventually. I mean, you can't just, uh, <laughs> can't just put all this time in it and just like forget about it. You got to get something out of it. Right. Uh, other than that, I finished all the core plot lines in Star Wars The Old Republic. I highly recommend other people do the same. It's mm-hmm. free to play. Admittedly, the free to play section of it is a little egregious, but it, it's worth playing those plots. Egregious um, in what way? Because I, I, I always hear it's free to play now, and I'm not sure. I, I know you could still subscribe to get bonuses and stuff. I just don't know where the differences lie. So if you subscribe, you just get all of the things and it's fine. Uh, if you don't subscribe and you go the free-to-play model, it's like, do you want to change the way your clothes look? It's going to be uh, 99 cents. Mm-hmm. Do you want an extra row of bag slots? That's 99 cents. Do you want to be able to send mail? That's 99 cents. Do you want to be able to pick up certain items? 99 cents. Manufacture things? 99 cents. Travel on certain kinds of transport? 99 cents. And you get Freaks. like, yeah, like, whoa, okay. I see how this works. That's unrelenting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. But but the stories um, I, themselves are are good. Yeah, really good. Um, if you if you're not big on your story RPGs, I briefly tried Wildstar with some friends as well. Apparently, that still exists. Yeah, that, uh, apparently, yeah, c- combat is still good. Um, so if you don't care about the plot and you just want to run around and shoot some thing, some things in an MMO and you don't want to play World of Warcraft, it's it it's solid. Yeah, I, I, uh, th- these other MMOs. Yeah, I always. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to try uh, Wild Star. I, I might try Star Wars: The Old Republic, but I'm not going to make time for another one. I, I, I always yeah. am surprised when you when people do say, "Oh yeah, no, that's still not just running, but the people, lots of people are still playing it or whatever." It's always yeah. shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, this this is me. Um, I, I have a fondness for MMOs. This is me desperately trying to avoid going back to my 
annual flirtation with World of Warcraft. Yeah, where dude. new expansion comes out, play WoW yeah. for three months, get bored, leave. That's Mike. It's kind of a weird time for that anyways, because uh, it's like we're pretty late into the one expansion. Yeah. The next one's probably getting announced at BlizzCon, I imagine. So, yeah, awkward times. Uh, yeah, for sure. Y- you also, last time I was on Recommended, I played Dead Cells. Yes, good game. So, update. I played Dead Cells. It's excellent. I gave it- my wife uh, a controller and suggested... You might like Dead Cells. You like Rogue Legacy, and there's some similarities. I, I never got the controller back. <laughs> yep. I just played 120 hours of Dead Cells. Wow. Like, okay, that's really like into it. In a, in a, in a month, like I, I, yeah. I haven't, I've barely played the game. <laughs> I mean, it is that kind of game where you can lose it. yourself in, and it keeps getting better. They keep making really significant improvements, so there's reasons to go back even beyond just one, like liking the game. So, yeah, yeah she, that's she good to hear. It. It's crazy. Huh. Good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I got kittens. Just thought I'd drop that. Oh, yeah. Like actual kittens, not not the game like kittens. actual kittens. How many? Real, real, real life. Two, two real oh, life Jess kittens. Loves it. Ugh. Cat, kittens are good. Mike is bad. Kittens are fine. Cats are awful. Cats are great too. Cats are way better than Mike. It's just, it's just <laughs> science. Yeah, that's great. Just, uh, what, do you know what kind of kittens they are? What kind of cats are gonna? What, uh, like just breed? domestic. Just domestic short hairs. Yeah. Uh, jet black, both of them are jet black. Apparently, jet black cats are really hard to adopt, so go and adopt jet black cats, people. Oh, cool. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I, I I always knew people were uh, like the black cat thing. People are pretty mean to them, like when they come across them. I didn't know that it's, that made them difficult to adopt or something. Yeah, yeah apparently, uh, the the agency we adopted them, the agency, the home that we adopted them through, were like, oh yeah, we're we're probably gonna have a lot of trouble adopting these because they're both completely black. Hmm. And we're like. Really? And the lady's like, oh, oh yeah, like people would rather take adults than black kittens. And I'm like, Jesus. All right, cool. Okay, they're adorable. I'll have them. Mike's thinking black kittens are awful. I can see it in your eyes, Mike. Black kittens are just as bad as regular kittens. There's nothing wrong with them specifically. <laughs> uh, Get black okay. kitten for Mike 2018. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got a couple other things here, Bob. Let's let's give a uh, let's give Mike uh, a chance, and then we'll uh, get back to your last couple uh, and getting on to the next section. A uh, section, uh, Shimagami Tensei: Strange Journey. So I guess you yeah. found your next RPG. Yeah, my, my descent into weebness is continuing. Yeah, although geez. by Shimagami Tensei standards, this game is like pretty non weeby, right? It's not. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take place in Tokyo. As an international cast, you're like going to Antarctica to like. Okay, it gets a little weird because there's yeah. like a doom cloud that's trying to like that's about to consume the world. It's not exactly demons complex. inside it. Yeah. yeah, so you know you gotta gotta stop that problem. But yeah, it's it's I'm not super far into it. It's got the typical Shin Megami Tensei tropes of you know demon uh, negotiating, collecting the demons and stuff. It's just it is kind of nice to see like a different setting for a game like this. It it feels that that really does feel kind of more unique. And is this on 3DS? Did you mention that? This is DS. They're remaking it or remake it. I don't know if remakes the word. They're doing something for um, the 3DS that's coming out soon ish. Hmm. Um, But I actually already had the uh, DS version. I kind of wanted to give that a shot. So that's what I'm up to. Yeah. No, I I want to hear updates on this one and see if it's how it fits into your, list of Japanese RPGs right, for the well, last I, five years or whatever. Right. Well, I liked I like Persona a lot. The only Shin Megami Tensai proper game I played was 4, which I thought was fine, but not great. So uh, we'll see what I think of this one. I got the uh, the crossover game with Fire Emblem that I've never played. I might see I, for the Wii U. I would like to play that, but I keep, like, I'm not going to play on the Wii U. I know. At some point, they need to make a uh, uh, just, yeah, Switch just version it, of just that. Put yeah, it put it on Switch. Switch. Yeah, be great. Perfect. Be fantastic. I'd love it. Absolutely. I um, really need to play a new RPG. What's, oh, some good ones. what's the last ones you've been playing? Have you played anything recently? Um, I I mean Skyrim and Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, but so like okay. not JRPG. Yeah, yeah. That's my specialty. Like, <laughs> I, I I feel like there's a difference between the Western RPG and the JRPG oh, that yeah. kind of makes me feel like the Western RPG isn't what I want from an RPG. Oh. Um you should like, just play Persona you should just play Persona uh five then. That's all you need. To do. Yeah, maybe I should try it. I mean, if you want to play a JRPG, that's the one to play right now. Yeah, at least right now, for sure. Um, I miss I, Final Fantasy Seven. I guess I, I've been playing a little bit of an RPG, Kingsway. Uh, that oh, that's okay. the one that Stephanie mentioned last week. I played a little bit of E three. I played a little bit more. Um, it's like really the it, browser it, it, one, not yeah, browser, so but you know, the yeah. OS RPG. So, I, uh, Bomb, have you heard of this one? This Kingsway game from Adult Swim. 
I have not. So it's really cool. It is a, an RPG in, in its systems, but the way it's all presented is an operating system. So you get um like window pop ups, like letting you know you have quests. Okay. Uh, when you go from one town to the other, you like click on the map. And you're like, I'm gonna go there. There's a loading bar. And and then that's like, like that's you traveling uh, during that loading bar. You might get into random encounters and other windows will pop up with enemies pop. And the windows might be like bouncing over the screen. And you have to tap on them. Uh, it's really interesting, really fun. And I'm I'm happy to say that it does like support a full game. And it's not just like, oh, this is cute. Uh, I'm going to play it for five minutes and I get the idea. No, there's like depth here. You you really um, can appreciate like over a long period of time. Like, oh, no, this is a full fledged game. So I'm really happy with that. I haven't like gotten anywhere close to finishing it or anything like that, but I'm definitely going to go back. And then I noticed they also have daily runs. Uh, so like, even after like you finish, like whatever, like the quest is or something, um, you can go back and just kind of do daily runs each day, trying to get as far as possible on one life, I suppose. Uh, which is, I always like that in, in indie games. Um, not Splatoon, uh, uh, Spelunky did that for a long time. And I always love that. So Definitely, definitely enjoying that. Yeah. Um, you got a couple other things, Bob, on your list before we get to the news. Why don't you go ahead and uh, mark those off? And we'll, uh... Sure. Uh, just just a couple of quick things, really. Um, first of all, Overwatch. Still playing Overwatch. Uh, yeah. A little less than I was. I don't know whether they've maybe changed the matchmaking system or I'm just getting worse. But uh, recently, like, I've been playing quick play. I've just been getting destroyed. Um, probably, probably a bit of both. You're probably getting worse and the match making it worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I feel like they try and match people based on their level. And like, I've played a lot of the game, but I'm still not very good at it. And then right. they're like matching me up with people who are level 600 in like Platinum League or something. And I'm just getting wrecked. Um, but I'm well, excited for Doomfist. Yeah. So, been, uh, like he's not out yet. When is he out? Like later this week? The 27th. Uh, Thursday. 27th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I played him on the PTR. He's going to be one of those heroes who's going to be really good if you can play him and right. awful if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, so I put a couple of reps in him on the, uh, the PTR because he looks really fun. And I want to be, want to be better at him. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh, I've been playing a lot of D and D and basically I've had, a, I've had a month of games. D and D has a pen and paper game. Uh, I GM a regular, uh, fortnightly D and D game, oh, um, which has been going on for nearly a year now. Um, so that continues. Um, and on that note, uh, I got to play test a new game called all their strengths, uh, which if you're a kid of the nineties, if you're a teenager in the nineties, will probably be right up your street. It's on RPG now. Uh, but basically it's like blade, the role-playing game, oh, fuck. But like the movie blade one as a role-playing game where you like, you make hybrids of two different crazy, uh, supernatural creatures and go on stupid adventures wearing long trench coats and wielding katanas. Sounds perfect. While yeah. listening to like <laughs> drowning pool or something. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Uh, so I got to play test that, which was really good. It's out now. Uh, mild pitch, but there you go. That's, and that, really that's cool. been yeah. me. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah. I think that actually is going to wrap it up for all, all of what we've been playing. Uh, anything else that you guys want to mention before we move on, Mike? No, it seems like things are, slowing down kind of right now there's there's some indie things that are hitting i know we we got our pyre review of today stephanie reviewed that which is oh yeah super giant game i wouldn't have like people talk are, about that but yeah yeah it seems like people are enjoying it so but check out our review of pyre on games beats and um yeah, like you know fantasy some other sports game yeah a lot of a lot of like really beautiful like hand-drawn looking games are like that's like starting to become almost more of a normal thing now it's like right. that's becoming the new pixel art I, i'm hoping <laughs> yeah totally nice. yeah pixel art's great but yeah some of that beautiful hand-drawn art is is mm-hmm. what i love as well all right, let's let's do it. Let's get into the news. Um, let's go. Just start at the top with this Pokemon Go Fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was apparently beset with glitches, and the company had to refund. A, a, I guess was this a, like a physical event, Mike? Do you have uh, any like details on this? Uh, I mean, it, so it was it was taking place at Chicago in their big park. I can't remember the name of it now. Right, but was the event thing. free? Did people like pay tickets to go to this thing? I'm gonna. Like, I didn't know there were tickets. There were tickets, yeah. I believe, to go in, and people were like driving in and flying in out of state and stuff. Yeah, and that, then they're that's all, good. and then yeah, I guess there was there was problem getting everybody inside because it was this big venue. Uh, and then once they were inside, there was all these people in this one small space. So so like the cell, cell data wasn't working. Of course. Uh, so oops. 
Yep. So it says that one like this point of vans will be offered will also be offered one hundred dollars in the form of at the apps in game currency. Um, so that's on top of the ticket refunds. Uh, yeah, that's that's rough. Uh, I kind of I mean, I know why they waited to put this festival together in the first place. But you think if you waited this long, you kind of get a lot of it right. I know these physical events are difficult, especially for a game that lives so much online and requires a connection to the cloud. Um, but yeah, this is this is rough. And I mean, yeah. So are you uh you gonna catch your Lugia? <laughs> I know, yeah. Those uh, so yeah, they have the I don't know if we talked about this last week, but the uh, um, legendary Pokemon are in the game, and it's I don't know if it's enough finally. to get me back into it. Yeah, finally, yeah. I don't think so, Mike. I think I'm gonna let Too Lugia. I'm gonna let it live free. I want it to be be out there in the wild instead of having to have okay. me come. Fair training. enough. Yeah, fair enough. I, I I was honestly surprised it was still popular enough to warrant something like that. So it's I, still popular. It's uh, a relative thing because it's not as popular as the global sensation that it was when it first came out. But it is still one of the top ten highest grossing iPhone games and Android games, which is enough to make that's like millions of dollars. A day, yeah, I mean, it's right? still substantial. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like I mean, it's right in the in the range of all of the other most popular cell phone games, like uh, you know, Clash of Clans or uh, you know. Um, you know the other Clash game. There, people play those games. They're very into them. But they just weren't on the nightly news every night like Pokemon Go was there for a while. Um, yeah. yeah. So that game's going to continue. We'll we'll see. I, I'm not, I'm probably not going to play it ever again. Um, and no, yeah, I don't but, think I will either. But I'm glad. Well, I'm glad the legendaries are in there. I hope their next event goes better than that. Um, the uh, other big news uh, from last week: the June 2017 NPD numbers dropped. Uh, game sales are are, are kind of bouncing back. Uh, they're up to 765 million. That's up 7% year over year. Um, there were some bigger releases this year compared to last year. So that helped with that. Uh, but also just hardware is selling better. And a lot of that is credited to the switch. Uh, that, that said the PlayStation four was the stop, the top selling console, just because there's more inventory to sell. Uh, also Sony introduced the one terabyte gold PS4 slim. People were into that. Uh, and they kind of swooped all, swooped all of those up. Um, as for as far as software, Tekken Seven was the best-selling game. That was the new one of the big new releases. Uh, Injustice Two, though, uh, after topping last month's, came in number two this month. So that's a uh, fighting game still selling and selling very well. That game looks yeah, like man, it could be. That uh, game sure has been doing real well the last like after almost disappearing to the point where like you know right when, like they, they were kind of niche games until Street Fighter right. Four sort of slowly began really bringing really them back. To- yeah, you know, we we just kind of I think people didn't know where they fit, and now it's sort of understood that you can have that competitive audience, but there is there is a very casual audience that just wants to play these games single player and maybe with their friends every once in a while. And Justice may be the best at tapping into that with its excellent single player campaign. Right, just those nether own games in general. I mean, they kind right. of they Mortal made the well. uh, they kind of like yeah created a standard for single player content with that Mortal Kombat reboot, and, and they're really still the best off. at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I remember that was the first real fighting game I got back into was the the rebooted Mortal Kombat with the the store, like the challenge mode. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I can't remember what it's called, which one it was now, but yeah, they've been really quite playable since. It's just called Mortal Kombat. Solid. It came out two thousand nine. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, oh, you mean the, yeah, there was like the tower mode, and then there was like the campaign mode. They're, they're both yeah, the, really ca- the campaign mode I really enjoyed, and honestly, uh, I'm not entirely surprised that Injustice Two's been been doing so well because. Since they released that game, they've just all been really solid, fun games. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus, and this is like that stuff with also the DC Universe license. So right, it helps. Absolutely. The uh, the uh, other new games, Crash Bandicoot and Splatoon, were four and five. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, I think, surprised even Sony, even Activision, everyone involved in making that. Uh, but that game sold really well, and it yeah. only, it only had two days on this chart. So the, the period for uh, for for June was you know it only went to like the last couple of days of June and. Only two of those days included the sales of Crash Bandicoot, and yet it's still I think this just before. this just makes it clear how ridiculous it was that they mismanaged that series into oblivion. Because yes. people like Crash Bandicoot, clearly they will buy a good Crash Bandicoot games. Like there's still just a lot of love out for that character, and I think the uh, the remakes were really well done. And then you know I was I was I was kind of saying that I was high on it. I didn't know if it was going to sell this well. I'm glad it was, but I think it maybe proves another point. I was talking about how this series does better as a Sony thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I think they're still going to be tempted to release like an Xbox one version or something. And I still think that'll be a bad mistake, bad but we'll see. We'll see what they do. Yeah. Um, how about you, Bob? You, is that a kind of a series that you are interested in going back uh, and playing? Going back and playing? Not really. Well, just um, these updated versions, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I re- I mean, I really like them. Uh, and talking about my wife again, she really liked Crash Bandicoot too. Um, but honestly, I've, I've just... I don't know whether it's the genre or whether it's just the latest set of games from the genre, but for the most part, I've just kind of gone off platformers. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the, the, I, I'm, I'm still way into them, but I don't, I don't think you're alone in that... Uh... In that feeling, See, I'm like the other way. Like I'm like coming back to platformers hard. Like I spend a lot of time playing just old platformers now and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know I, why. Crash Bandicoot is different enough uh, that I think if you do want to pick up a platformer, it's the kind of game where like, oh, this is at least different enough that it's not going to be like any of these you know 15 other games I could select from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I t- kind of stands I'll out. I'll tell you what, way. I would kill for. Uh, I would kill for someone to do a remix of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Like a like with like HD graphics and stuff and uh, hell hell I'll just take it exactly as is just on the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say I don't know if you even need to because I don't even think you need to touch that game because that game is such good pixel art. Yeah, I, I I mean I got it on a uh, backwards compatibility on my Xbox One. They put it on Xbox Live Arcade on the 360, so I, I played it on there like oh. a couple months ago. And yeah, that's still a good game. It's it still, really is. Circle of the Moon's better, but still a good game. Circle of the Moon is better. Oh, no one likes Circle it. of the Moon. Uh, it's so much better. Everyone turned on Circle of the Moon as soon as Harmony Descendants came along. You know what? We should do this. Circle of the Moon is Circle better? Circle of the Moon is better. Okay. Out of... Mm-hmm. Out, that is like... That is... I think most people regard that as the worst of all the Metroidvania uh, Castlevania games. And most people are wrong. I, I don't know that we can be friends anymore. <laughs> Over Aria... Wait, what about Aria of Sorrow? Or, or all, what all, the other ones? All really good. But it, it went like this: Symphony Night, and then it goes up because of all the the interactive uh, mechanics of like the double tap to run, and the, all the weapons felt better, and the weapon options, and the card system in Castle uh, Circle of the Moon, and then all of the other uh, three uh, Game Boy and the DS ones were just sort of remixes on that same one that didn't quite live up to Circle of the Moon. Eat it. <laughs> okay, here's Look, what we're. Granted, we're gonna, I haven't played Circle of the Moon in a while, but I don't know. I, uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna actually do a we're gonna rank those Castlevania games, the cat the the Metroidvania ones, uh, and yeah, Circle of the Moon's gonna win. So, no, it's not. Okay, no, uh, no, not even close. <laughs> it really isn't. I realize that I'm insane on this one a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> that, that's just it's what's in my heart. Um, okay, yeah, more MPD. So, ARMS finished five. Uh, hey, good for ARMS. Yeah, ARMS, do, uh, that's really well for uh, on a system that has um, not a huge install base yet. It's a new a franchise, a, whole, a completely new IP, and Nintendo sales don't include digital figures. So, uh, you know, Crash Bandicoot, that included digital sales. This one didn't, so it, it was number five. Maybe could have kind of been right there next to Crash Bandicoot if you do include digital. Um MPD, although, or, or overall, I'm sorry, Nintendo uh, was three of the top five best selling games in June, uh, and that's including Zelda and Mario Kart. Uh, so that Switch, you know, the hardware is not just selling, it's not just, you know, boosting the hardware business. Those games are selling, people are looking for software for that system. Uh, one of the other software notes, uh, this is probably the last one that we'll move on Grand Theft Auto V came out in 2013. And it has now, so far, in just 2017, outsold Horizon Zero Dawn. It has outsold Mass Effect. That's upsetting. Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, it has well, outsold almost like most other games that have come out this so far this year. That game is just it's a it's a it's its own thing. It's a juggernaut. It, it's unstoppable. Did- I, f- I feel like some of this has to do with the fact that it's cross-platform and some of it has to do with mods, surely, though, right? Yeah, a little bit, for well, sure. It I mean, doesn't matter on all these console versions, though, right? I, I, I think, you know, what it really has to do with is that online mode. That's what it's... It's, it's not it's, just it's, that. It's, I think it's like people go out to get a system, uh, like they go from their PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, and if they, for some reason, if they didn't buy the game on, the, on those platforms, like they, they go in and they get it for this one. Like, it's the one game that they buy with the new system. Grand Theft Auto Online is a big part of that as well. That that online mode still works uh, on PC. Th- th- you know, this figure does include some uh, you know, PC sales. The mods are helping it there. It's it, but it's just I think it's just the brand name. I think people just they recognize it when they buy new hardware. That's the game they get. Uh, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I mean, it's you why we feel bad if, if you're buying Grand Theft Auto Five instead of Horizon Zero Dawn in 2017. You should feel bad about yourself. You, you, you should. Like I said, this is why we can't have nice things. I mean, it's not this just nice things. We... It's like we can't even get like uh, other Rockstar games. Like we haven't had a new Rockstar game since this game. So like, and, and we'll be getting uh, in, instead of getting some new interesting IP, we'll be getting Grand Theft Auto 37 in 50 <laughs> years time. 
be- because people keep going back and buying the same damn games over and over again. Oh, pardon my French. Right. Same damn games over again. Your French is beautiful, and I appreciate it. I, I do think you're right. We're going to keep getting... I, Rockstar is going to turn into Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption. Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, if they try other stuff, I'll, um, I'll be surprised. They just seem not interested in doing that anymore. Maybe Bully. I don't know. But even that doesn't seem likely anymore. Um it's sad. Yep, I, I real quick. Only three games have uh, sold better than Grand Theft, Grand Theft Auto Five so far. Uh, For Honor, The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, and Tom Clancy, Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. And uh, Zelda actually moved up to two this month, beating out For Honor. So that game's still selling well as well. Okay, a uh, couple other news items: uh, Titanfall 2's four-player co-op announced. I'm including this just because uh, I didn't even realize that when they announced this, it was the four-player co-op mode. Um, it was called, it's like operation force, special forces or something. Uh, I just wish they would be more clear on the branding. Cause I would have been excited about this. Uh, and I didn't realize it kind of until I was checking out today and like putting together this news list, like, Oh, this is the co-op mode. That's actually way more interesting. Um, instead of just like oh, a single new map. So, uh, I, I still love Titanfall two. It's not, it's kind of fallen out of my rotation just cause of games like uh PUBG and overwatch and a couple other things. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I might yeah, go back and try this. I love Titanfall 2, but it is weird how I didn't really play its multiplayer as much as I did for Titanfall 1. I don't know if it was competition uh, was different this time around or what. Yeah, I think you, so, you just you just happened to have... You had Overwatch. I mean, uh, that's going to yeah, be... It, it, I have it. It's sat in my living room untouched because I've just been playing other things. You should play the single-player campaign at least. Single-player is great. It's phenomenal. It's so good. Um. And it's not that long. You can get done in a couple hours, like six hours or something. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, finally, Player Unknown's Battleground reaches uh, fourth highest peak player count on Steam ever, uh, beating Grand Theft Auto V. So GTA V is unstoppable, but so is PUBG. Um, this also comes as the game reaches five million in sales, it sounds like, uh, according to Steam Spy. No official PR from Blue Hole about that, but Steam Spy has been pretty uh, spot on with these big games. Um, the That's a, a huge threshold to pass for an early access game to have that many people playing at once that it's bigger than gta 5 at launch uh it's almost it's, it's kind of not far off fallout 4 uh, it's like you know a hundred thousand behind that but it seems like maybe it could reach that one day who knows it's just huge there are a hundred thousand people playing fallout 4 every day no no okay, so this is the all-time record so like fallout 4 came out in like november 2015 or whatever it was i get it yeah, and it set its record then, and that record st- still stands as the number three, you know, behind only Valve's games, Counter Strike and uh, Dota Two. So, okay. so yeah. Uh, although I bet there are still a lot of people playing Fallout Four every day, but probably close to like thirty thousand. Um, PUBG is a machine. Yep, it's unstoppable. Until until the developer does something to piss off the fans, and then it'll be another story. I'm kind of just waiting for that other shoe to drop, but who knows? Um, I think that's going to do it for news in the first section and for Bob. So. Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's really excellent. Uh, we're going to look forward to have you on again real soon to kind of catch us up on actually your continued addiction to Factorio. Don't even front. Uh, probably. Don't front. Probably. <laughs> when we return, we're going to talk about what the hell is going on with the Switch Online app. Uh, we did a video about this, but we're going to talk to our podcast audience. You guys deserve to know as well. Um, it's a mess. Uh, get that when we come back. For now, we're going to go to a break. Whether developing, playing, or simply hosting games on a server, Intel makes it happen. And Intel wants to make sure the biggest innovations in gaming continue to happen on the PC by giving developers a hand with the Intel Game Dev Program. All you have to do is sign up, and Intel will provide the resources necessary to help you continue to innovate and make gaming even more amazing. Head on over to the Game Dev Program at software.intel.com slash gamedev to get started. Again, that URL is software.intel.com slash gamedev. And we're back. All right, Mike. Yo. I gotta, I gotta fix the videos, but let's talk about Nintendo. About their, their app. Yeah, but uh, I mean, what, what, yeah. Uh, what do you I'm, want me to say about it? Let's, uh, well, let's start by just kind of. How I hate it. How it makes me sad. Yeah, and it really is just atrocious, atrocious, and and I mean, it's it. Did you have hopes? I guess is where we should start. So, what were your hopes, kind of, when we booted that thing up for the first time? 
I guess my hope at the very I thought that yeah, it was gonna be annoying that I was on the phone, but I thought that there would be a friends list and I would just pick on a person's name and we could like start a group. It would easily like invite people to that group. And when we're in that group, we can then just like whatever game we want to play with each other, we would like be grouped into it automatically. Right. It's nowhere near that. It's nothing even close. So um the reality is we you get the app, you have to start the group from your game still. So you can't start the group from your phone. Uh, that's not an option. So you go to Splatoon 2, the one game that works with it right now. You go to the the, on, the online group option. I think it's called Online Lounge. You click that. It sends a notification to your phone that has the app already installed and your account signed up. And you click on that, and then you could start inviting people, I think, with by sending them a link or whatever uh, on your phone. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's already kind of a mess. But then the fact that it just throws you into, and exclusively so, p- private matches, at least until you unlock League Battles, which are unlocked until you reach B- in re- like in your uh, online ranking, and that's the rank mode. So that's not even like the level system that's in the casual game. So it's just all of these hurdles and these weird filters and all these weird uh, obstacles that keep you from doing exactly what you want to do. And, and then the voices don't even sound good. Uh, com- compared to anything like Discord, Skype, anything, yeah. uh, it's just a hot mess. It's just, I, it's just so weird. I, I really wish I knew how it came to this. How it, it went, just went from like, how are we gonna do the online stuff? Like, first off, it was probably a very long debate if they were even going to do it. I'm sure a lot of people right. didn't want to, and then like this was the weird compromise. They threw out the word like uh app to like the board or something and they were like mm-hmm. oh pokemon go oh yes apps good and uh, i don't know that's like all i can think of these people just don't know what's happening and buzzword buzzword and now we have this so nintendo owns 10 percent of dna this is the company that uh they brought in to help them figure out their online system to help them uh build out the the back end of all their mobile games to help develop the mobile games uh, they spent a hundred and like eighty five million dollars, I think, to acquire that ten percent of DNA, and it's just complete. Like it just seems like a complete waste of money because what has DNA done that Nintendo either couldn't have figured out itself, or done better, or paid someone else to do better? Um, it just seems like such a dumb investment. Like why? Like what did that money go to? If this is the on, if this is the online experience you're going to present to gamers, um, and, and then you know even then, like not just the, you know, spending the money, but like. Like, what is the purpose of this? Like, who, like, what, like, what are you trying to accomplish? Is it really just working backwards from wanting to protect kids, working backwards from not really having an interest in online gaming in the first place? Or do they, do they have some vision here that we're not seeing? Like, can you imagine any, anything like that? Oh, Mike, hang on. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing you anymore, Mike. Let me uh, check, make sure you're, oh, you've fallen out of the cast. Okay. Hang on. Uh, just keep, let me uh, get the audio in here instead. Okay, go ahead and talk. Wait, unmute, unmute yourself in the uh, video. Hello, I'm still on the cast on my end, so I don't know why you okay. lost me there. Yeah, don't worry. But, uh, uh, we'll just work mm-hmm. it here. So, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think there's any grand plan. I think it's just bad and stupid. And uh, they just they did a bad job. I don't think it's like there's something we're not getting or there's something that's going to show up. Like so, I, some of the stuff with the, like... Like that there's like a homepage for each game. You can see your stats and stuff. That's fine. I think the app was just that yeah, part. Maybe things. that'd be fine. I can get why maybe like when somebody showed them that it like made this idea seem better. They just can't. I just don't understand how the group, like the grouping itself was just such a weird mess of a problem. Like if you had like two friends you want to play Splatoon 2 online with right now, like, like what are you going to do? You're going to get into this app and then you, you make a group of two people so you talk for two seconds as it sets up a game. Then it puts you on a one versus one match with each other. That's all you can do. You can't go into regular matches. And then it, you can't even talk to each other while you're doing that because you're on opposing teams and the game doesn't want you to cheat. Just so so bizarre. Yep. It, uh, it's uh, it's completely absurd. Lost me completely. Uh, and then I think when I uh, was first testing it out, I was like, maybe there's a, a purpose for this. But like I said earlier, now that the game is here, I just, I have no interest in even opening the app. I've gotten some notifications from people saying, hey, come play. 
And I'm like, no, I'm going to click on this, and it's just going to put me in, the, in a weird private room with you. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to be like, oh, this is broken. Maybe play a one-on-one -on -one match and then go do something else, like break up the group and move on. Uh, it's such a poor experience when you actually do have friends playing this game that it almost does seem like it would be demoralizing and kind of make you dislike the game more. I mean, are you finding <laughs> that's the case? It's weird because like you almost want to, but then you're like, no, no, I like this game. Mm -hmm. It's good, it's stupid, but like, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know who to blame for it. Is it this game's fault? Is it Nintendo's fault? What's happening here? Why is this so upsetting? I mean, it's uh, definitely it's, Nintendo's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very strange whirlwind of emotions, though. But, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The whole thing is just so freaking bizarre. Like, I don't know how it came to this. I mean. It, I was saying that maybe beforehand, like it would be cool if other games use this as like their hub for like, uh, like you were describing using the app to look at your stats. You can use it to like change clothes in for your, your character and like buy weapons and things like that. I really like that stuff. That stuff could work. Sure, that's fine. But no one's like, I, it, it seems like that's, so, that's gonna... so unnecessary. That's so after you, after we right. get everything else working, we can maybe do some of this stuff. Right. And then, like, who's, like who's going to support this? Like from a third party standpoint, when it, the app is going to be dead on arrival, no one's going to be using it. Uh, it what just what just infuriates me is that you know that they are shocked right now. Nintendo yeah. is shocked that people don't like this thing. Yep. Yeah, and they're gonna uh, they might you know have some updates in the future, but I don't think they're gonna address the real problems. I don't have confidence in them to do that. No. Um, I. That said, you know, we posted that video of us trying this for the first time and kind of realizing what we were in. Uh, I mean, the, there was kind of no fans really defending them. Some people were just saying, oh, I don't think you could really do it so far because you haven't played enough or haven't used it enough. And I was just like, hey, I, I feel like we did everything we could possibly do. Like, there are no other options in here. Like, we pressed all the buttons. We looked at all, all the features. Uh, maybe we could have waited until we unlocked the league play. But most people aren't going to play League Play. Like, that's for, for if you have, like, a right, full... Well, such a, it's incredible to even get to that point, because you have to get to level 10, which takes... Which is longer than you would think of this game. Climbing yeah. the levels is for whatever you want. Then you have to, like, get a certain rank, and... Does the town, is the town so stupid that they think people grouping up with each other is cheating? I, I don't know. I They think it's an unfair advantage? I, I, yeah, I have no idea. I, it seems like that's what they're treating it like, because you can't just do it in the quick play. Uh, it's, there's no way. I mean, you have to do the thing where you, we jump into each other's games and most of the time, I mean, it's not, it, it's not just like, oh, the game sees that we're together and it's like putting us in different teams. It's just, that's the odds. Like there's four other spots on the other side. If that was the way you had to do it. But like the fact that even once you do that, we can't just like play with each other. It's insane. Right. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. So yeah, it does seem like there's, there, there's something where they're like, oh, people can't have friends playing together because then they'll always win. And it's just like, no, just the match make us with like. Other groups are just... Yeah, they didn't that. think that far ahead. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> other groups? What? No way. How would you... Oh, that sounds hard. That sounds hard. <laughs> yeah, so... I don't know. It's so bizarre. Just... This whole thing is such a dumpster fire. I wish I could talk... I just wish I could talk to somebody at Nintendo mm -hmm. and yell at them. It's like freaking... I know Kotaku gets to like, talk to Reggie like once a year at E3. I just wish it would, like that could happen now. Yeah. Yeah. Have that conversation yeah. right this moment. Uh after after seeing what this thing like, really even is. Because like the last time, like he was trying to defend the whole film thing about how it was going to be a great idea, and he was like, it, "It sounds like it won't be." He's like, "Oh, it will be. It's not. It's not. It's, it's just like <laughs> it's it's it immediately sounded like a bad idea, and that you maybe were like hoping the best for, it. and it was a bad idea that's even worse than you were expecting." And I mean, it, it just seems like maybe the switch is not powerful enough, or they're afraid to take any power away from rendering the game to run an app in the background that handles voice and friend groups and things like that. But th I mean, if you, if that's the case, like what the hell, like just build the system to work with this stuff. Like just give it that yeah. extra juice, find some way to do it. Give it uh, like, you know, a dedicated like mobile chip or something for that. I mean, there's as, gotta as, be something you can do as great as the switch is. It is almost a shame that like they kind of had to get it out there a little sooner than maybe they mm -hmm. wanted to. Yeah. I, it, it, it just like this, if this app is just the result of it being half baked, maybe that's slightly more forgivable because you know, they have this game coming out and they are getting games out to us. And it's great to be playing these games instead of having to wait for them. And Splatoon two does mostly work, but it doesn't feel like it's just half baked. Is the only thing wrong here? It feels like fundamentally, they just don't know what they want to do with this mm -hmm. and maybe they don't want to do it at all. And that, that's what we're getting. Um, I don't know what this app is going to look like when they start charging money for online play. Um, that'll be that'll be rough. I don't I have no idea. The only incentive is going to be some old NES games. 
which right. are already that's that's gonna be rough. And this was some of the other replies we got to that video, or like like the app doesn't cost anything. What are you talking about? It's, I mean, they're just gonna charge for online play. It's like, buddy, come on. These are all intertwined features of the online system. This app is almost useless, almost useless if you don't if you're not gonna pay that twenty dollars a year. And sure, like it's only twenty dollars a year. And you're, you're going to get classic NES games and you get to play online uh, with or without your friends. Uh, but this app is is going to be included in the way that 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 so that network is sold. And when I like make the purchasing decision, I'm going to be thinking about using this app and I'm going to be like, man, that sucks that I'm paying for this. Uh, they have to improve it, though, before, between now and then. I mean, they say they're not going to start charging charging until 2018 now. Uh, they really delayed that. Uh, it is a good thing they did make this free version, at least, so that there can be time to to do something. Get at the very to... least, they got to get rid of this ridiculous. You can't run it in the background of your phone business. Yes. Oh boy, that's yeah, that... insane. There's no way you can charge for it if, like, you can't like lock the screen while using it to chat. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that, it just completely defeats the purpose of having a, a mobile app. I mean, if you can't use it when the phone is in your pocket. Like, yeah, I, I want to be able to continue talking to people when I'm looking at the switch screen and not my phone screen. And I don't want my phone to die because I'm using my phone. So I'm probably in a mobile situation. It's just all wrong. It's all so wrong. Like every single aspect of it is wrong. It's like the worst way they could have done. Like, made, like you're presented with a, a series of choices and every single one of them, they're like, Oh yeah, or like it's a choose your own adventure novel, and like they're telling you this. If you choose this, you're probably going to end up in the swamp with the monster, and it's going to eat you, and you're going to die. And they just chose that one over and over and over every time. <sighs> strange. Okay. It's not this weird like incompetency streak of Nintendo. They they should be they should be like what Disney yeah. is to movies right now. Like Nintendo should be that to gaming. Instead, it just feels like they're always like. They're always like they're they're always doing fine or well or they're they have these periods where they're struggling or these periods where they're like doing better like sometimes it's weird that Nintendo is ever has to be perceived as an underdog because they right. only ever put themselves in that situation they're mm-hmm. freaking Nintendo yeah absolutely right and, and 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 it's because of aspects like these where they they just don't get certain things and they're not gonna make the effort to try they don't think they have to it's hubris a lot of times is what it seems like and and that hubris is what always gets them into these ruts. Um, I don't think I don't think this is uh, something they can't turn around or they can't fix. I just I they want to. Yes, I, that's the thing. I just think that maybe they don't have they now, don't want to put the energy in the first place. There is going to be a metric here that they might care about more than for, you know they they don't care about what we say or what people online say a lot of times. But I bet they'll care about app reviews on the iTunes Store. Yes, so that seemed to bother them with Mario even right. The mm-hmm. fact, since they had a chip on the shoulder with Mario Run. So, and this thing's yeah. at two stars right now on uh, iTunes. So maybe that'll, that'll get them going. Get nothing else of all things. <laughs> yep. Maybe that's... that'll make them feel bad. Yeah. I ho- Hopefully, I, you know, it's, they don't sell things outside of their own store a lot of time, at least online. Uh, so to have to deal with another app review system, it's probably going to be very frustrating for them. And, and you're right. Maybe that'll get the fire lit under their ass. Uh, who knows? Okay, I, I think that's going to wrap it up, though. Um, I just I hope it gets better. Uh, I want to I want to use my Switch as an online system, and I want to have all the features I have everywhere else. But eh, not not yet. It's still a dream. Nope. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to say goodbye to everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, once again. Thanks to Bob for coming on. I uh, mm-hmm. love having Bob Gardner thanks, on. Bob. Uh, Mike, first though, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on this here internet? Oh, you can find me on gamespeed.com. I was writing there. I'm on Twitter at Tolkoto. That's T O L K O T O. And I always do the Exploding Barrel podcast every week with my brother, another kind of a games, general movies, nerd culture stuff. And that's at epodcast.com. I am uh, also on GamesBeat, uh, writing some stuff up there. I have a YouTube page where I sometimes post videos, youtube.com slash Jeffrey Grubb. Um, on Twitter, I am, let's see what I'm, oh, we're just moving on with the alphabet. I'm Jeffrey mm-hmm. Grug or Jeff Grug with G's this time instead of B. It's not getting better than Jeff, Jeff Gruff, the crime dog. I'm yeah. That, that was kind of uh, yeah tippy top right Jeff there. Uh, Jeff Grubb on Twitter. Say hi, whatever. I'll say hi back if I'm not too lazy. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. Um, open salami.